Well, if it's so good, Hector, how, how come everybody's not doing this? Well, you know, Martin, that's a good question. And the reason is, you know, if it's so good to be in really good shape and really fit, why isn't everybody fitting and in shape? What do you think the answer to that is? So it takes a lot of work and dedication. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly what it takes in our business, too. It takes a lot of work and dedication. You know, if you're going to be successful in our business, you've got to be dedicated and work. If you got to want to get in really good shape, you've got to be disciplined, you've got to work. It doesn't mean that being in shape and being, you know, in good shape is not a good thing or that everybody can't do it, it's that they won't do it. So really it happens to be, a, it's, a, it's a personal decision, you know. If you want to be successful, then there's certain things you're going to have to do. And uh, it's just like being in shape or being in a business. So the reason everybody doesn't do it is because they come in, they go, everyone likes the idea of making a lot of money, right? Everybody likes the idea of being financially independent. Everybody likes the idea of building a big organization that would pay them, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in passive income. Isn't that a great idea? Yeah. yeah. Except that you got to work to do that. It doesn't, you know, people don't come to your house while you're sitting in your barca lounger and say, hey, here's a bunch of money. You're going to have to do something for that. That's the real reason why everybody's not doing it, because you actually have to do something. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. So the question sense. I have for you is, do you really want to be successful? Yes, I do. Okay, then why don't you give it a shot? Okay. All right? Well, Hector, you know, it sounds good and all, but how you doing? What, you know? How far have you gone in the business? Well, you know, honestly, I'm just getting started. I'm just learning how to do the business. And, um, and you know, one of the things that I need to do to build a successful business is to, you know, is to recruit people like you that are really sharp, that have credibility, that have good work ethic, that have good people skills and are competitive. And that, does that not describe you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, the, ra the way that you grow a Primerica business is to find people like you. If you're just starting, everybody has to start somewhere, right? Sure. Okay, so this is where I am right now. So far, I've recruited three people, and okay. I've written you know, two or three life transactions. I did a, a couple of loans, and I'm learning how to do the business. And so the reason I'm talking to you is because, you know, as I showed you, how do you get promoted in Primerica, right? You know, sure. what you need to do is you need to recruit X number of people, and you've got to do a certain amount of production in order to go from one level to the next level. Right now, I'm a district leader. You know, I'm at the first promotion level because yeah. I've recruited these, you know, a few people. And in order for me to go to the next level, I've got to recruit more. So that's the reason I'm talking to you because if I can recruit somebody like you who's a sharp person that's credible, good people skills, competitive, right? then uh, th that's going to increase the op op opportunity for me to go to the next level. So, and, and the other thing is this, you know, really, does it matter how I'm doing or does it matter how you think you're going to do? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd like to know that I can do it. Yeah, know? okay. So it really, when, if we just, you know, pull back, you know, peel back the onion, the real main thing that's important is how do you think you can do it? Because although I'm just getting started, I'm having a little bit of success. Not as much as I, as I would like to yet because I'm just getting going. But there are, look at this book right here. There's all these people that are making, you know, there's a couple thousand people, 3,000 people making between $100,000 a year and like four and a half to $5 million a year. So obviously a lot of other people have done well. And regardless of whether where I'm at, we already know that a lot of people have already done it. People like you that come from the same background you came from, there's a countless number of people that have been successful at it. So if they've done it, is there any reason you couldn't do it? Mm. If you made a decision to do it? No, but I mean, how much money are you making in it, you know? Well, I just, like I said, I got started. I've probably made since I got started $1,500, $2,000, something like that. Okay. But this month, it's my intention to do 10 life transactions, two loans, and a couple of mutual funds. If I do that, and I, you know, I'm kind of on track to do that, sure. I think I could probably make, you know, two or $3,000 this month. Okay. Part time, because I still have my job. And so I think this first year, the, you know, it's my intention to make you know twenty five to thirty thousand, maybe fifty thousand, my first year. Okay. And as I start building this organization, if I can get people like you on board, then I think next year I have the potential to maybe t you know hike that up to a hundred thousand. Yeah. All right. Okay. But again, that's where I'm at. Being honest with you, but I think you'd be great at this thing. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, Hector, the company looks good. I mean, solid company. What you do for families is good, but 
uh, I don't know, I'd like to just think it over a little bit. I need some time. Okay. You know, when somebody says you should, they, they need to think it over, one, especially if they've seen it, you can see that our company is really fantastic. Sure. Tons of credibility with Citigroup as our parent company, et cetera, right? Yes. You can see from the examples of what we do for people, what we do for people is pretty fabulous, right? Yes. I mean, we make very, very significant differences in people's financial lives. And then the compensation, I mean, come on. It's, it's kind of almost ridiculous how good it is, right? Yes. Okay, so, you know, you say yes to all those three things, and then yet you're saying, I want to think it over. When somebody tells me they want to think it over, what they're really saying to me generally is, I'm not sure I can do this. Is yeah. that kind of what you're feeling like? Are you kind of a little bit hesitant on whether you can do the business well, or yeah. not? Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I, I can't see myself doing uh, this type of business. Okay, so then that's really the issue. The issue is not that you don't think the business is great, and the opportunity is great. It's really you're not sure about whether you can do it or not. Yeah, I'd like to think if I could even do something like this. Well, well, first of all, of course you can do something like this. There, are, you know, you're you're a sharp guy. You're college educated. You're a very bright guy. We have people that have no college. I mean, you know, one of the top guys in our company is a guy named Steve. I mean, uh, Rick Susie and Rick, you know, it's, he doesn't he didn't go to college at all, right? And he's making last year made two point six million dollars. We got another guy named Chris Howard. Same thing. Was a little engine. He was a, he was an electrician. Never went to college made uh, $1.2 million last year. I mean, there's a lot of people like that in our company. Sure. So these are people with no education that started our business, that are doing, they're multimillionaires today. So if these people with no education and you with tons of education, a really sharp guy, you know, you know, come on, you can't look at with me a straight face and say, these guys could do it, but I can't do it? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yes. Of course you can do it. Of course you can be great at this thing. Of course, you just have to apply yourself. Okay. Look, okay? All right, let's get started. Let's give it a shot. All right, let's All right. try it. You know what, Hector? Everything looks good, what you've shown me, but uh, I'm the kind of person that just needs to go do my research. I'm going to get on the Internet and, and check out the company and stuff. Hey, listen, no problem. I don't have any problem with you doing it. But listen, I want to make sure you understand something. Did you know that over 50% of the information on the Internet is false? False? Were you aware of that? No. Because, see, when you go on the Internet, you can, if you're an Internet savvy, you can post anything you want on the Internet. Anything. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it is, right? It, it could be completely 100% inaccurate, and it's written on the Internet. That doesn't make it correct, right? I mean, every company, if you look at every company out there, I don't care what company it is, whether it's, Walmart. Walmart's one of the is the most successful retailer ever in history, and they have tons of negative stuff about them. Doesn't mean Walmart's a bad company. Well, maybe, maybe not. Right? Doesn't mean it is. Right? And you look at everything. You look at the government. There's people that are negative about the government, et cetera, et cetera. So I guarantee you, if you go on the internet, you're probably going to find something like that. All right. But the best way to make a decision on whether this is right or not is to talk to people that are engaged in the business, that are doing the business, that are actually, you know, having some success and find out from them people that are doing it, not from somebody, a disgruntled person that uh, may or may not have had a good or bad experience. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to do that. So I just want you to caution you about that. The decision you make about whether to get in Primerica or not should really be based on your personal experience, what you experience, what you see. Not when somebody on the internet sees, right? Don't you don't you agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and let's get this thing started. Get you going. You can do your research. That's fine. But let's see. Why don't you see how we operate? How I operate? The way that I do things? The way that we? You know, your experience with me in the business. I think that's going to really solidify how you feel about Primerica more than anything you could possibly read on the internet. Okay. Okay. You know what, Hector? Everything's good, and uh, you know, you know, I did this to help out Juan with this training and everything. But I think we're okay right now. We don't need to do uh, an analysis at this point. Maybe later on, we'll do something. All right, Martin. You you told me earlier, I, and I and I talked about this, talked to us repeatedly during the presentation that you felt it was important to have a plan that your family's financial future was the most important thing to you. 
and you currently don't have any kind of a plan. And uh, now I'm offering you a plan that's going to allow you to retire much sooner than you're on pace to retire. It's going to allow you to get out of debt a lot sooner than you're, you know, you're scheduled to right now. It's going to create a lot more options, better savings, rates of returns, everything. Everything's going to be improved. And now you have a chance to do that, and it's, you know, there's no charge to do that. It's complimentary. And on the one hand, you're saying, I want to improve my financial life. On the other hand, you're saying, I don't want to do this. I don't, I'm like kind of lost. I don't really quite understand that thought process. Could you help me out? Mm, yeah, you're right. It, uh, well, what, what do we need to do then? All we need to do is, you know, I'm just going to go through this. Kind of, it's kind of like a, um, you ever did an application for uh, a credit card or something like that? I mean, yeah. Just, yeah. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start asking you some questions about where you're at right now. We're going to find out where you are right now, what your situation is. And then once we get that information, we're going to take that information and we're going to put it into a, 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 a program that we have, a really sophisticated program we have designed. And then what that's going to do is going to kind of, it's going to print out some recommendation solutions to get you from where you are right now or where you want to go financially. That's all it's going to do. So it's kind of like this, it's kind of like garbage in, garbage out. I don't know if you ever heard that, that terminology yeah. before. The better quality of information you put in, the better quality of information you get out. So all I need to do is get that information from you. It's not going to take very long. It might take, you know, 20 minutes or so to do that. And once you do that, then I'll take that back. We'll, we'll come up with a, a, plan, a game plan for you, and we'll get you on the road to where you really want to go, which is you want to get debt-free and financially independent. You told me that earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, and you don't have a plan to do that right now. Based on where you're going right now, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah, you're right about that. All right, that. so let's go ahead and do that, right? Okay. All right, great. Well, Hector, you know, thanks uh, for showing me what my needs are in terms of the life policy, but I just kind of want to think about this. I, Biv and I need some time to think about this. Okay, I understand that. One of the things that, you know, we, you know, when I talk to you about the need for life insurance, because you don't have any right now. Yes. You know, right now, you're making $100,000 a year. That's about $8,300 a month that you're bringing into the family every month, right into the household. Biv's making 60000 That's about $5,000 a month that you're, she's bringing in. And you don't have any protection right now. You have two young children. Um, you've got a mortgage. You've got all the other obligations that go along with running a household and a family, right? So remember what I said, the reason for the life insurance, okay, it's important that you understand it, is to replace the income. So you're a father, you're a husband, and you're a provider, right? Yes. Okay, you've got those three things going for you. So all of a sudden, we t you have your $8,000 a month coming into the household. You die, boom, that's gone. The problem with that, Juan, is that you've got the mortgage, you've got to feed your children, you've got everything else, right? From yes. from utilities to insurances to tuitions to et cetera, et cetera, all those things. They don't stop, and they're not going to stop, right? So right now you've, your family's in a kind of precarious position, and you told me earlier that protecting your family and providing financial security for your family was the most important thing to you in your life. But now you're saying you want to think about it. To me, I'm kind of lost here. I don't understand the concept of you want to do the best thing for your family, but then you want to think about doing the best thing for your family. I'm not sure which one, which one it really is. Well, it's just, you know, I guess um, I can't see me spending something like, you know, uh, the, the, on a monthly basis for like a life policy. Well, we, the, 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 the terms of spending have to do with your belief in, in the benefit of it and what it does sure. for your family. So if, if, if spending $160 a month automatically replaces $8,000 a month of income to your family, that doesn't make sense to you? Well, yeah, I guess. Because I, right now, what are you spending on your homeowner's insurance a year? Um, on a yearly basis, about $550. Five hundred and fifty dollars, so about you know forty dollar, forty five bucks a month or yeah, so. Okay, right there. and then your auto insurance. What are you spending on that? Wow, about two thousand dollars a year. A year. So about one hundred and sixty dollars a month. Yes. So you're spending one hundred and sixty dollars a month for a vehicle that's worth fifty thousand or less, probably, right? Less than that. Okay, so you're you're insuring a car that's replaceable. Yes. 
with $166 a month, but you're saying you're not sure about replacing $8,000 a month in income, which if you die tomorrow, it may that may be 20 years worth of income, right? Yes. $100,000 a year for 20 years is $2 million. Yes. Can you see the irony in that? I see. You see that? Yeah. So, okay, I don't want to sell it to you unless you really understand that you need it. Well, no, I, I okay, mean, I see you, what you're getting But you've at. got to understand that you need it because you do need it. It's not like something, I'm not trying to sell it to you just to make a sale. I'm trying to get you to see that you really need to do this if you care about your family, if you want to make sure. So, so look, if you, like I said this to you before, but if you die, the challenge with that is it's a huge loss emotionally to your family. Yes. Come on, you know that, right? If, if Viv died, would that not be a huge emotional loss? Yes. Imagine you lose somebody you care about and love, and then on top of that, you put a financial burden on top of that. Yeah. Does that make any sense if you could avoid that, to, 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 to do, let that happen? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, okay, great. And, and you guys make plenty of money to be able to afford something in your budget. Right. Yes. In fact, I'm going to show you how you're going to save a lot of money, anyways. That's going to be inconsequential to the whole picture when we get done. Okay. 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 Thanks. All right. So you ready to go ahead with that? Yes. No problem, right? Yeah. No problem. All right. Okay. Great. Let's go ahead and do that then. Okay. You know what, Hector? Everything looks good. Um, I'm so glad that you let me know about this policy because I want to get rid of it as soon as I can. Mm -hmm. But um, let me, you know, take some time and really, you know, look over your proposal because I don't want to be making the same mistake again that I made last time. I understand that. Usually when people are hesitant about making any kind of change, Martin, it's because they're really afraid of making a mistake. You know, because if you knew, if you and Denise knew that this was absolutely the right thing for you, that this was going to help you accomplish what you truly wanted to accomplish financially and beyond a shadow of a doubt, you wouldn't have any hesitation in making a change tonight, would you? No, we wouldn't. Yeah, okay, so then there's still a little bit of doubt there, and that's my fault, okay? So let me do this. Let me go over this one more time to make this really clear so that you feel and you know that you're making the right choice for you and your family, for you and Denise, okay? So let's go over this one time. Right now you've got this VUL policy. You've got 250000 217 on you, 250 on Denise. You're spending $345 a month, okay? Well, right, you okay with right, that? Right, right. Okay, so I'm proposing the same amount of protection for $111 a month. Okay, so we're going to save you almost $300 a month. Does that seem like a bad decision so far? No. No. no, no so a $300 a month saving. And remember, with your current invest, you know, program, the one you have right now, if you die, whatever amount of money is in the savings account portion of your policy, right, you only get the face amount. That reverts back to the company. Hmm. Whereas with our program, the, whatever you have in the savings account, they're two separate entities, right? Right. So your family gets the 250 or the 217 plus whatever's accumulated. You get both of them versus one or the other. Remember the other thing that's really important is that, uh, so that's good too, right? Yeah. So the other thing that's important is that with your current policy, if you need to take money out of your account for any reason, they have six months to give it to you, right? Yeah. It's in your policy, and they're going to charge you interest to take that out, and then whatever you take out is going to reduce your death benefit. Hmm. Whereas with ours, you don't have to borrow it. There's no interest to pay. If you take any money out, it has no effect whatsoever on the death benefit because they're completely separate. Not to mention the rate of return in the investment, you know, investing it yourself is much better. Another thing that I want to point out to you and I want to remind you about too is that by putting, investing that difference in a qualified account like an IRA or your 401k, you get to deduct all of that from your income on top of that. You get to deduct it. Where here, you don't get to deduct anything. So you get a tax savings as in addition to not having to borrow, in addition to getting that, in addition to you dying. In every way, shape, or form, it's better. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's right here in black and white. Yeah. So if you're looking at this in black and white, you see all the pros and all the cons. You can see that this is a really good decision for you and your family, right? Yeah. It's going to better your family. You see that? Yes. Okay, so can we go ahead then? Well, you know, let me talk to my uh, my agent and then find out, you know, my brother-in-law because he sold it to me. I want to know why he sold it to me. Okay, so we already talked about that earlier. Remember I said, you know, if, if he sold it to you, does it really matter why he sold it to you? Uh, you know, he's an agent, and he could have sold you potentially a term insurance policy and proposed what I'm proposing. He didn't do that, though. Yeah. He chose not to do the very best thing for you for whatever reason. I don't know him, okay? All I know is he didn't. It's kind of like if you're going to go, if a dentist pulled out the wrong tooth, 
right? Would you go back to that, revisit that dentist so you can pull out another <laughs> tooth? No way. No, no you way. wouldn't do that. It's crazy, isn't it? Right. right? Yeah, so you're right. You're you know, right. there's there is there really a reason that you need to talk to them? No, let's you might, go we, ahead. You want to, you know, punch them or something. Yeah, I don't probably. know, right? <laughs> you know, but other than that, there's no reason to, right? All right, let's go ahead and let's do it. Let's do this. Come yeah. on. This is the right thing. You know it is. It's in black and white. It's clear as day here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. Well, Hector, you know, I completely understand the coverage that we need, but right now it just doesn't fit in our budget. I don't mm -hmm. think we could afford that. Okay, I understand that. Well, that's, you know, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to get you involved in something that you can't um, feel comfortable, you know, uh, investing in on a monthly basis because that's, that's not going to help you or help me or help anybody. That doesn't make any sense. But right now, you don't have any protection, so um, that's a bad situation. We already realized yes. that, right, because like we talked about, loss of income, you know, you don't want to do that. It's too big of a burden, and, and there's a way to alleviate that. Yes. Let me ask you a question. What number do you feel would be comfortable at this stage of the game right now? I mean, like tonight, what could you comfortably feel like? Feel I can write a check, and that's not going to put too much of a strain on my budget. Well, based on our budget, we're looking at anywhere between like 80 and and $100 a month. Okay, so would it be 80 or $100? Um, well, I'm... You know, right in between, how about like 90? Okay, 90. Okay, why don't we do this? Let's figure out what 90 would do for you right now, how much that would protection, you, and then we'll go from there. Okay. We'll start at 90. I, obviously, one of the things my intention is going to be to get you the proper amount of protection at some point, I, okay. but I want us, we need, you don't have zero right now, so it makes no sense to have nothing to continue with zero. Yes. So let's get, let's get the maximum amount we can with the 90. We'll start with that. And then okay. what I'm going to do through this FNA and everything we're going to be doing, we're going to figure out a way to free up the additional money so that you can easily afford that, okay? And there's okay. some different options. We're going to help you with your debt situation. That's going to free up money. Uh, we're going to take a look at your, um, you know, your deductions, how you're doing your W-2s. That may be a way to free up money. There's a lot of different things we're going to look at. We're going to do a budget analysis, and we'll look at where all the money's going. Okay. Because there's probably easily another 40, 50 bucks going out that, that you probably could trim if you really, you know, paid attention, yes. all right? And so we're going to look at that as well. So, but let's go ahead. Let's start with a 90. Let's figure that out. We'll get that done tonight. Okay. Okay. And then we'll work on increasing it. It's, gonna, it's real easy to increase it. We won't have any problem doing that. It's a piece of cake to increase it once the policy is established. And we want to get you conditionally covered tonight. Okay? Okay. All right. Great. You know what? Hector, we're, we're pretty young and we're healthy right now, and uh, I just don't really see a big need for it right now. Well, you know, one of the interesting things about, uh, about insurance protection, especially life insurance protection, is, you know, the reason you get it is because you don't know when you're going to die. Let me ask you a question. Do you, do you have any idea the day you're going to die? <laughs> no. Huh? No, I don't. You don't know what that day is, do you? No. All right, there's no way of knowing that, because if you knew the day, you'd go buy it the day before, right? Right. Okay, but we don't know that. I mean, anything can happen. There's people that die when they're 15, 20, 25, 30, all different ages, right? There's a lot of different ways. So the reason for the insurance, again, it's really important. I don't want to sell you something that you're not going to feel comfortable with, you're not going to own. You've got two young kids right now, right? And even right. though you're young, you still have two young kids. And, you know, in addition to being a father and a husband, you're a money machine to your family. And right now you're making about five or six thousand dollars a month. Every month that money's coming into your family, all right. And Denise is working at a bank, which she makes about two or three thousand dollars a month, yeah. right? Okay. So if you're making five thousand dollars a month, if something happens, if you die, I mean, you're in a truck all day, right? Mm -hmm. There's a potential for getting in an accident, and you know, I hope that never happens, and it probably won't happen, but you never know, right? You're in a truck all day. If all of a sudden you're gone, right? That five thousand dollar a month income to your family is also gone. It's history, right? So now, your two kids, who you love very much, right, and your wife are going to have to live on two or three thousand dollars a month. Right now, they're living on on eight thousand dollars a month. So how's that going to be for them? It's going to be very difficult. It's going to be rough, right? Yeah. It's going to be rough. So you can avoid that. You're a young person right now. It's like sixty-eight dollars a month to take care of that. You're going to tell me for sixty-eight dollars, you're going to risk your family having to suffer financially? No. Right? Doesn't make any sense, right? No, it doesn't. Okay. So let's get this done. You know it's the right thing. You know you need to do it. Uh, and the whole point of it is to replace all of you. What we're going to do is we're going to get you investing money, too. We're going to get you saving money. My intention is to help you make a lot more money than you're making right now. You want to do that, right? 
Absolutely. So if I can help you start making an extra thousand or two or three thousand dollars a month, the sixty-eight dollars is, in, is it's pretty inconsequential, right? Right. All right. Let's get busy doing that then. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, you know, Hector, thanks. You kind of opened our eyes to, you know, our current situation, but mm -hmm. I think we're going to go shop around now. Okay. Well, that's fine. Not a problem. What are you shopping around for? Uh, just where I can, I guess, get the best loan and, you know, find out, you know, what else is out there because we really never even thought about it. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you haven't even thought about it. You don't... So let me say one of the things that's going to happen when you shop around, okay? And I don't have any problem with you shopping around. That's, that's fine. There's not a problem with that. But one of the thing, challenges you're going to have when you're shopping around is when you talk to people... None of them are going to be able to put together the debt uh, elimination strategy that I put together for you. That okay. how you're going to get out of debt, taking that money and investing it. All the different parts of this loan that that we do that nobody else does. No one's going to do that. Now you may even find a loan that the interest rate might be a little bit lower. But see, one of the things is you don't pay your payment with interest rate. What do you pay your payment with? Well, I send in a check every with month. With dollars, yeah. right? So the main thing you want to be concerned about is, is interest rates important to a point, but really what you're paying for the loan is the most important thing. How much you're going to pay over the length of the loan and what you're paying on a monthly basis, right? Sure. And how soon you're going to be out of debt. Yeah. With typical mortgage companies, right, they're not concerned about that. They just want to get you a loan. They don't care what happens to you. They don't care if you get in debt and stay in debt for the rest of your life or not. They don't care if you have a debt elimination strategy or not. They don't care about any of that. Right? They just want to do a loan. Yes. Right. I didn't come here just to do a loan. You notice this whole package is the loan part of it. It's just one part of it, right? We've yes. got the investments. We've got the insurance. We've got the whole package. We've got the strategies, everything, right? Yes. So um, when you're looking around for loan, the question you have to ask is, when am I going to be in debt and how much is this loan going to cost me? That's what you really want to know. Yes. Okay. Not just the interest rate because if you shop interest rate only, there's tons of companies that are going to tell you i got a lower interest rate. But what you've really got to look at is what are you going to pay? And what's this going to cost me over the length of the time? And you already know what this is going to cost you. It's going to cost you a heck of a lot less than you're, than you're paying right now, isn't it? Yes. Okay. And nobody's going to do that for you. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to let you shop. I'm going to take my information. And I'm going to take it with me. You go to your shopping, right? Okay. And when you finish your shopping, how long is it going to take you to finish shopping? I need about a week. Okay. So I'll call you at the end of the week, and we'll see what you've got. Okay. What I need from you is a commitment that when you find this loan, that you get all the information to me so we can compare it. Okay. Would you do that for me? Yes. All right. And if that loan's better, I want to. I'm going to tell you you should do it. Okay. And if my loan's better, you're going to take my loan. Okay. Okay. Can we shake on that? Sure. All right. Great. Thanks. You know what, Hector? The loan proposal looks good. It's just. Your interest rate's way too high, man. How high is it? How much too high is it? Well, I'm paying six, and you're proposing like a seven and a half. And so how? And, and you're and you're paying. A, what are you paying a month on your payment? You're told all your pay, your debt payments right now. Like twenty five hundred. Okay, and so what is it going to be with us? Like eighteen hundred. Okay, so that is that more or less? Well, I'm paying more. Yeah, so you'd be paying less with my interest rate. Yeah. So is interest rate the, is really the issue? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you need a lower interest rate, or do you need to pay less per month in dollars? I guess less dollars would be better. Yeah, because what does it matter if the interest rate is 20% and ours is, and ours is 20 and it's 10 or it's 8 or it's 6? You really, you pay your loan with what? With dollars, with don't dollars, you? yeah. You don't pay it with interest rates, right? You pay it in dollars. And the most important thing is how much is it costing me and how much is it going to cost me over the length of the loan? That's the real question, not the interest rate. Interest rate is not is not the issue. Yeah, Would you agree right. with that? You're right. Because it's in black and white here. This is what you're doing right now. This is your interest rate. This is when you're going to be out of debt. This is what your cost is. And this is it if you make a change. Okay. And it's pretty clear, right? Yeah. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. All right, great. All right.
Well, Hector, you know, I, I understand the, uh, the portfolio that you put together, mm -hmm. but it's just too risky putting it in the market. I mean, I keep hearing the market's up, the market's down. I could just go to my bank and they tell me it's guaranteed like in a CD. It's mm -hmm. guaranteed, right? Yeah, it is guaranteed. It's guaranteed to lose money over time. That's what it's guaranteed to do. Haven't you seen? Let me let me show you again how this works. Okay. Okay. If you go with a CD, all right. In our proposal this is a proposal I have in front of you right here. Sure. Right now, your 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 the CDs that that you're involved in right over the last um, thirty years have averaged six percent. Okay. Okay. So based on this hundred thousand dollars that you have, you're going to end up with, um, you know, five hundred and. Um, Thirty-seven thousand dollars at the end of that uh, thirty-year period of time. Okay. Okay, which is not bad. I mean, not a problem. But if you invested it, if you would have invested it, where what you say is it's not guaranteed and it seems a little more, you know, risky or yes. aggressive, however you however you put that. Yes. This particular thing ends up at you know three million dollars. Wow. Okay, so the difference is two and a half million dollars. Yes. Okay, so which one to you is more risky? Well, I mean, if I have the potential to earn, you know, two, three million dollars, and I mean, yeah, it's risky. Or the potential to lose two or three million dollars if you stay in what you're in. True. Right? True. You're yes. going to lose that potential income if you stay where you are. Yes. So what's more risky? Staying where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can see that, right? Yes. Because the quality, think of the difference. A big thing you have to think of is if I have 500, I have three million. What's the difference in the quality of life at retirement with five versus three? Oh well, there's a huge difference. It's like it's completely obvious which which way you need to go, right? Which yes. decision you need to make? Yes. The reason you want to go with what we have to offer in the portfolio and the diversification, the diversification of this investment is what what affords you some level of uh, you know risk reduction, yes, if you will, right? That's what it does. That's the reason for the for the multiple um, you know in, in mutual funds that we're going to use. To yeah. offset that that fear you have of risk, right? Absolutely. Right, and so all we have to go on when we make any kind of decision or choice about anything that we purchase, whether it be a car or whether it be an investment, is how has that company performed in the past, right? Yes. How has it performed in the past? Like I don't know what kind of car do you drive? Um, I drive uh, Tahoe. It's a truck. Tahoe. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose a Tahoe? Well, for, you know, the size for, you know, my family feel secure mm -hmm. and, you know, I have two kids. Uh, I want a good, solid safe car. car. Yeah, yeah, safe car. And it's reliable. Reliable, yeah. Has a good track record. Yes. Right, you know, it's not, they don't produce a bunch of lemons. Yes. Right? Well, the same thing as investments. You look at their track record. What do they, how have they done in the past? And this is what I'm showing you. This is how it's done in the past. I didn't make this up. This is actually what happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Great. Yeah, you, you know what, Hector, the, the mutual funds that you're proposing sound pretty good, but I was, you know, looking through Money Magazine and Vanguard's got these uh, funds at no load funds mm -hmm. and stuff, so I, I heard that you should never pay a fee, you know, to invest your money. Okay, well then, that's fine. The, the, the point, the question you have to ask yourself is how are you going to decide which funds to buy? If you have a question, who are you going to talk to? You know, are you going to talk to your mailman because, you know, there's nobody to talk to at Vanguard if you have a question about your investment or about your fund or how it works. The other problem is, is if the market all of a sudden takes a dip or a downturn and your, your portfolio starts to decrease, who do you call for help? Who do you call to walk you through that, to help you understand, you know, the conditions and what's going on right now? Who are you going to talk to when you do that? Well, don't, they, don't they have like a 1-800 number that you could call and ask advice and stuff like that? I don't know. Do they? Well, I, I thought they did. Well, you'd have to check that out. I don't think you're going to, unless, you, if you're, unless you're going to invest a significant amount of money, you're not going to get any help from these companies, hmm. right? You're going to have to do all your own research. You're going to have to figure it out on your own. You're going to have to make the decisions. There's not going to be anybody you can counsel with. That's what happens, right? The reason it's free, right? Have you ever heard the thing is, you know, I mean, nothing's really free? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. When it's free, then what is it? Are you going to have great service when something's free? I guess not. No, of course not. That's not possible because they can't, they can't give you both. They can't give you great service and then not charge you anything. Right. Right. So you've got to give something somewhere, right? It's just like the, you know, when you go to, uh, 
a really fine dining establishment or you go to McDonald's, right? Do you have great service at McDonald's? <laughs> no. No, the experience <laughs> is bad, right? And you yeah. don't pay much for it. But you go to a really great restaurant where the food's fabulous, right? They have a chef and great service, but you got to pay for it. Right. Right? So if you want high quality service and value, you've got you know, you've got to pay for it. There's no free ride, right? Right. That's the way things are because you do work, don't you? Yes. Do when you work do you expect to get paid? All the time, and yeah. Of course you do. So I'm going to do a lot of work for you. I'm going to find the funds for you. I'm going to make the port put the portfolio together. I'm going to answer questions. I'm going to research anything. Do you have any questions about your investment or things you want to do regarding that or anything else to have to do with financial situation? That's who's going to help you? That's going to be me. Okay. I'm going to help you. So you're not just getting that, you're getting the whole package, you're getting everything, you're getting a financial plan and you're getting somebody to, to answer questions, do research for you, take care of you and guide you all the way through to where you want to be, right? And that's what you need. You need a coach. You need somebody to coach you through and that's what I'm going to do for you. Okay. okay. I'm going to be that for you. All right. Does that then. make sense? Yes. All right. Great. All right, guys, that's a conclusion of overcoming objections. There's, there may be some other objections that come up. One of the things as you look at this, uh, this video or you listen to the audio portion of it, pay attention to the questions I ask. Really, I, it's the, the, the really the detail of, of overcoming objections. The key to overcoming objections is the, are the questions you ask. They're really the questions you ask. You know, I ask a lot of questions. I don't really say a lot. You'll notice that the more you pay attention to that. You learn how to ask those questions like that, and you lead people to a decision that's good for, for them. One of the key things about closing and overcoming objections is always having the attention to take that client and help them make decisions that are good for them. If they're not good for them, we're never going to close. We're never going to ask for the, for the business or get them involved, right? But if it makes sense for them, we're going to always ask. That's what we should do. So overcoming objections is really an issue of asking questions, asking the appropriate question. You learn how to do that, you're going to be really great at overcoming objections. I would recommend that you listen to this or watch this repeatedly over and over and over. You're going to hear these objections come up throughout your, um, you know, your, your primary career. Uh, the more appointments you go on, the more likely you're going to hear one of these objections. What you want to do is you want to get to the point where your ability to answer them is reflexive, just like I did. And you can get that good. It's going to take repetition on your, on your part. Uh, you should probably listen to the audio portion of this 100 or more times, maybe two or 300 times. You know, Depends how good you want to be. If you want to be really good, if you want to get like I am, I've been doing this for a long time, right? I'm really good at this because I've done it over and over and over again. And you can get that good too. Couple that with watching it and then your own personal experience, you're going to be amazed at how effective you're going to be. The one thing I've discovered, the thing that stands between us and wealth in Primerica is really our ability to overcome people's objections and their areas of concern and to teach other people to do the same thing. You get really good at that and you're going to be amazed at how fast you can grow this thing and how much success, how much money you can make and really how much money you can help others make in doing that. So uh, have a great time closing those objections, overcoming them, because it's fun. Once you get good at this, it's like a game. It's like a game. It's always been like a game to me. I always enjoy the process because when they come at me, I just, I just relish that. It just, it's fun to see how good you can be at overcoming objections. This stuff works. Practice drill rehearse. <laughs>